What up world, it's the DMC back at it once again. And in this video, I'm gonna go over on how to do a black wash and to do dry brushing on your dioramas. Uh, usually get a lot of questions on, hey, how do you do this, how do you do that? What's the ratio of black to water that you use on the black wash, yada, yada, yada. So I figure what better way than to just answer all the questions at once by making a nice little video. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to Bob the Odd. His link will be in my description here for this video. Um, it's because of him I got into dioramas. Uh, watching his videos really inspired me to give it a give it a try. So if you want a better explanation on how to do things, you know, go check out his channel and see what he's all about. Um, so there's that. All right, so let's first go into doing the black wash. Um, as you see here, got a little piece of foam already cut and textured, and it's ready to go. So we got that. We got our cups. One's got water, one's empty. Got our Walmart paint. And we're ready to go. Oh, and of course, a brush. Okay, so... Basically, what I like to do is I just eyeball everything. Uh, I've seen some videos where they say, you know, it's going to be two parts of water, one part of black, um, this, that, and the other thing. Um, yeah, that doesn't work for me. Um, so, everything's eyeball. It's all art. So, when it comes to art, I always say, do whatever you want. As long as it comes out good, as long as it looks cool you're good all right so as you can see here I'm just I, I'm just eyeballing everything okay um, now let's mix it around okay and you look at that consistency there all right it's not too bad so the best way to do it is to do it okay as you can see okay and you're probably asking well what is the point of black wash for you newbies, all right? Because obviously if you've done this before, you know exactly what it's for. Uh, we just want to get into all the nicks and crannies, you know. Uh, with this brick here, basically it's to give the illusion of the grout, of the cement in between the brickwork, just to dirty it up, okay? See, it's... and there we go. Now for me, this looks too light. Okay, some people say, hey, there you go. Um, just get some paper towels, dry it. You know, if you want to do that, it's fine, but you're going to be using a lot of paper towels. Okay? So what I usually do is just do this, and I just let it sit out. That's what takes a long time for me, anyways, on dioramas, is just the wait time on things drying. Because um, I just don't like to wipe it off and just waste paper towels for no reason. I just let it dry naturally and while you're doing it while that's drying you can do another part of your diorama start cutting this painting that you know whatever um, just give it time to dry on its own you know so that's still kind of it's kind of light to me um, I don't like seeing uh, that much pink at least in dioramas anyways uh, but I would probably go a little bit thicker. So just keep adding water. I'm sorry, just keep adding paint until you get the consistency you like. Um, some people will say, hey, that looks good. That's too dark. It's all up to you. It's just a preference. Just remember when you're adding the black wash, the lighter it is, the lighter the color on top is going to be. So the darker this is, the black wash, the darker the color you put on top is going to be. So I'm going to use this color here. It's running out, so it's got to be upside down. Uh, what is this? Tucson Red uh, for the bricks. Now, I've got one already, another one prepped, ready to go. It's already dried. As you can see, it's pretty dark. You don't really see any of the foam underneath. Sometimes I like to go a little bit darker, um, but it's just all in what you're trying to accomplish in the diorama. How dirty do you want it to be? How clean do you want it to be? Um, 
So that's that. That's that's it with the black wash. It's not really that complicated. Some people try to make it compli more complicated than it is, especially on those videos where uh, you know you uh, you put two parts of water and uh, one part of black and you mix it together thoroughly to get the ratio of 1.25 versus the three milliliters of the water and yada yada yada. Okay, it's not that complicated. I eyeball everything. You're good. You're all right. Okay, so. We got this. So yeah, you're gonna make a little bit of mess. Now that's why we have the newspaper down here. Okay, now we're gonna dry brush. Now it's time for the dry brush. Now the secret weapon is finding the crappiest brush you can. Okay, now this is a, a dollar brush at Home Depot. Um, in two years, I probably switched this out once. Uh, once it starts getting rusty, it gets kind of nasty. I just don't like it, so I just throw it away. Uh, one of the reasons I like using the, the crappiest brush is because they come with the coarsest bristles. And for me, anyways, it works really well when I'm dry brushing. Um, so, we go with that one. Now, oh, there we go. Some people, they do the weirdest things. Uh, they want, you get, you know, you get a bunch of paper towels, you dry off your brush, to the possible, the most possibly just driest that you can, and that's how they do it. Yeah, you, go ahead, you do that way, but you're gonna waste a lot of paper towels. You're just gonna make a lot more of a mess in my and for me anyways. So what I like to do, you know, I'm just gonna put it on here right as of right now. Sometimes you know I use bowls, cups, whatever, but you know for the purpose of, of this little video, we're just gonna put some right here. Now what I do is just dab it a little bit. And instead of getting paper towels and drying it, what I have to do is just kind of make circles. Because I'm not, I'm not really making, putting that much paint on my brush. So as you can tell, it's already starting to dry out. Okay. Um, another, another reason why I put the paper, the paper down is because of dry brushing also. Because all this is going to get thrown away later on. So I, I either use this paper or I just use a cardboard box, a cardboard, and I use that piece of cardboard over and over again because this is what I'm doing, is just painting all over it. And for me, it just saves, it saves on paper. And what really helps doing this method, doing circles or swishing it around, is you're evenly applying all the paint to your brush. Can you see, as you can see, the paint is evenly distributed all over the brush. So you're good to go now, all right? And what I usually do is I start, I start kind of practicing without even touching it, just to get a motion of my wrist. You know, some people say I'm good with that motion, but. Um, so, let's go. And as I was talking to you, now my brush is already super dry, okay? But no problem. And there you go, all right? It's too dry. You can still, you see too much black on the bottom, all right? So I'm gonna little dab here, swish it around. He's evenly distributing the paint. And now what I usually do here, now you wanna barely, barely touch your foam. Sometimes when I see people painting there, they're just friggin' applying the crap out of paint on their diorama. And you can tell on the pictures that there, there's just globs of paint all over. To me, it just, it kind of looks sloppy in a way. Um, Cause you're not getting that realism. Cause this is all illusion, you know, you're trying to make it look as real as possible. So when you're dabbing on globs of paint, it's evenly, it's gonna be on there thick and clean. When was the last time you saw a brand new building other than the day it opened? You're gonna see the grime, you're gonna see the little imperfections all in the building. And this is already looking good, pretty much good to go for me. And there you have it. When, when you're done with this, it should look like a nice Thomas's English muffin where you can see all the nooks and crannies. 
And that's one of the points of doing the black wash underneath is to also seep into the little nooks and crannies. Now here I've already textured it and I'm going to tell you what I use to texture it because then what the hell do you need me for to make you dioramas if you know all my secrets. So maybe on another one I'll tell you but for right now we're going to keep it on the low. Okay. Then of course as I'm cutting I'll get my exacto, pop maybe a little holes here and there. This one I just made one just so you can get the idea of the little nooks and crannies. So. And to me, that looks nice. It looks nice and beat up, nice and old. Um, and then later on, you can, of course, do your indentions into the brick to give it a little bit more oomph. Um, sometimes I'll get a little bit of orange, a little bit of brown, and maybe color one here, one there, give a little bit of different impression. Sometimes I'll do use a little bit of white. You know, it all depends on the, the look you're going for in your dioramas. How dirty do you want it to be? How used do you want it to look? And to me, some of the best dioramas are the ones that have the best technique in painting. Um, you know, and that might not be the most creative, but because they've applied the paint so good, it just looks fantastic. The simplest diorama can look great with a great paint job. But again, that's just my opinion. So, you know, there you go. Now I'm gonna go back to this one that we jar brushed, as you can see, you can see the pink on there. I, I don't like that. So I would use more black into that wash and make this almost a full on black, a black layer. Okay, because that paint, once I put the red on there, it's gonna be very light. And this way, like I said, the darker you go, the darker your top layer is gonna look. So if you were to use, say, let's say gray, Instead, of that's going to be your base coat because you're just trying something different. This one, this paint, this Tucson red that I used, will look lighter. And to me, it won't give you that grimy look that at least I go for in the dioramas. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's not rocket science, people. Anyone can do this with practice. Okay, as long as you know the fundamentals, which is the main thing is learning the fundamentals and then go from there and do your own thing. Uh, like I said, I watched Bob the Odds videos and I learned a lot from his videos and then I just decided to do my own thing, you know, my own techniques on how to do things. And, that, and I, it's worked well for me. I get commissions. I get a lot of compliments on my dioramas. So it's worked for me and I'm sure it will work for you. Uh, just keep on practicing, you know, ask questions uh, in the Dio Structure group on Facebook. Everybody's very willing to help you learn techniques and to answer questions. So I hope this has helped and uh, until the next time everybody, see ya!